Hey everybody, Pan Bam Richard here, and welcome back to the Kirby 64 playthrough. In the last episode, we finished Aquastar, and now we are entering the Volcanic Rim through Neostar. So, let's start off with the first stage over here, and you will notice at first glance that I am already equipped with the bomb power up. Um, reason being is because, you know that gimmick that I stated previously where I said that you could get most of the power ups that can gain access to crystal shards um, easily in the stage where you can get them in? In this level, Neostar is where that starts to um, flip upside down here. So essentially, now we're going to be needing some power ups that we can get that we'll have to get before entering the level. But if we go through the stage normally, outside of the case of getting bombed beforehand, we should be able to do so just fine. Um, but yeah, uh, Neostar is all about the tropical. Um, Tropical little jungle aesthetics and whatnot. Um, you will be seeing some volcanic areas as well, but I do like how the the stages are varied in um, appearance in this level compared to how Aquastar was mostly like all water. So you'll be seeing more of that as we continue to go along here. So the reason why we have bomb is because we want to combine it with stone, and it'll give us this power up, which in my opinion is very. It's cool, but it's not really that useful. By the way, if we climb down here, we'll get ourselves our first crystal shard. Very nice. Um, but yeah, honestly, it's really not useful at all. But we need it, not for this stage, but for the stage after this. And it's the unfortunate um, circumstance of having to get power ups beforehand before we get to the actual stage itself. So. Um, I'm not going to show off what this power-up is <laughs> until we get to the stage. I don't think there will be an occasion at- I don't think there's going to be an occasion at all throughout this, um, stage. Which will require me to use my power-up, but we'll see what happens as we continue to proceed here. We got ourselves some nice Donkey Kong Jr. action over here. Um... Does anybody remember Donkey Kong Jr.? I'm pretty sure you guys are aware of the uh, Nintendo property back on the NES, which was also a port of the arcade version. But, I don't know, I just, just every single time I go through this part, I always think about like Donkey Kong. Well, I mean, obviously, Donkey Kong is all about the uh, vine climbing and whatnot. In any case, uh, we'll just continue on here. I mean, honestly, this power-up is very... Okay, I guess we do have to use the power-up here. So, um... Stone and Bomb throws a grenade, and you have to hold down to block yourself from the blast that would uh, occur afterwards. So, it does have a lot of range, which is very useful in that regard, but it just needs to collide with something or the time has to run out. And it's useful for like the mook battles that I just demonstrated, but not for the major boss fights, which I found very irritating, and also at the same time, I remember when I first encountered this ability, this combination, back when I was younger, and they don't tell you that you can hold down to um, deflect the, bl the the blast radius of the dynamite. And I, because of that, I had such a bad history with this uh, combination. By the way, you'll see a shadow hanging over this uh, platform here. We float up to grab the crystal shard. If you stand on those platforms for too long, they're going to collapse, so gotta make sure you run quickly through that right over there. And we got ourselves the invincibility candy, yes, two levels in a row where we get to hear this amazing jingle. But yeah, we do need to maintain stone and bomb for the next stage, and... Uh, by the way, we're also at the halfway point of this game, yes, I love- I'm now very much appreciating playthroughs of platformers, because they're definitely a lot shorter compared to RPGs, so I'm very much appreciating that. Um, we will be picking up the info card here, I mean... Or the maximum tomato. No, we got uh, neither of them. <laughs> uh, it's okay, we don't really need it for the next, um... I just realized I missed a shard in the first stage here. Well, I'm gonna show the footage of getting it here right now. And now that we got that done, here's stage 2. Now, I, I will make sure to not miss anything here in stage 2, because at the very beginning, you gotta float to the left here to grab the crystal shard. Very easy to miss. And uh, next up here we'll have our next automated segment with Waddle Dee. Um, this time here we're in a minecart here channeling some more Donkey Kong Country references. But the stage here isn't really as bad. You just gotta make sure to go 
on the upper route to get the next crystal shard here. Now, um, technically stone and bomb are available, but they only show up in the minecart segment, so you, <laughs> I mean, they're technically here in this stage, but you have no opportunity at all to swallow these enemies while you're on the minecart here, so... <sighs> I I mean, at first I was complimenting the level design, and then it sort of just went downhill once we start getting to um, these stages here, and that was a very, very late jump. Um, but yeah, honestly, it's just... Before, it used to be very um, um, complimentary to the level design because it would provide you the abilities right away, but now you have to get them prior to the stages. We'll be doing that next here, but we're going to continue to float over these uh, Twomp-like enemies and feeling horribly because of how... Um, it's weird because like with the Kirby Dreamland games, like Kirby Dreamland 3 and Kirby 64, um, those two games in the Dark Matter trilogy, Kirby's movement is kind of um, neutered whenever he's flying. Like, the horizontal movement is just not as... Um, uh, I guess, for lack of a better term, easy floating or or flexible. We're gonna have to use this, by the way, just to get rid of this one crab. We can also slide. I keep forgetting I can slide too, but you know, sometimes when you have an ability, you just have the instinct to just use it right away instead of having to slide each time, which does have a bit of a wind up time and a slow delay thereafter. But um, yeah, it's just um, it's odd how like that's another thing that kind of turned me off from Kirby Dreamland 3 as well. The floating. The, you really need to get momentum to jump and float, but if you don't have the momentum, you really float slowly. And it transferred to Kirby 64, which, compared to Kirby Superstar, I will be making those comparisons a lot because Kirby uh, Superstar is my favorite, favorite Kirby game of all time. Um, ultimately, it's just... It's a lot more smoother in Kirby uh, Superstar compared to this game. But that's alright, I can still adapt accordingly, but... <laughs> it's just hard to transition sometimes, like, especially if you're used to how it was in Kirby Superstar. But, simply jumping is just fine, it's just that you can't really do, like, trick maneuvering, like, going over the Twomp, like, enemies from the previous segment. And we're still holding to Stone and Bomb as much as I don't like to, because they really tease you- Oh, I hate these enemies. They really tease you- Ooh, jeez, that- he actually lobbed it very far there. But they really tease you with, um, how far it is in the level here, and you have to make sure to keep your ability because, um, yeah, when you lose a life, you also lose your combination as well, so I'm, I have to be a little bit more cautious here. The Crystal Shard is, oh, thank goodness for food. Oh, very, very nice, but the Crystal Shard is all the way to the right, um, of this segment here. Oh, that thing's gonna try to hunt me down, but thankfully I was able to float over. They, they do give you, like, a lot of obstacles here, and you really have to hold on to this ability because it- Oh, jeez! Uh... Thank goodness. You really have to hold on to the ability here, and they give you quite the obstacle course to maintain this ability, so... Um, right over here is the barricade we need to blast away. I believe I also referred to the player's guide when I was going through this stage. And there's the next crystal shard. Um, there is... No, actually, no, that was the last Crystal Shard. Yes, I swear I can count. But, yeah, now that we have that done, I think I can safely get rid of this power-up now. I will, you'll never be seeing that power-up again. <laughs> uh, so bad. This boss room is a joke. It's just a bunch of gel enemies. Um, funny thing about these enemies, just like the Sandman in the... in the... in Aqua Star, you can also lift them up and they'll just like dissipate because you're carrying water just like how you're carrying sand in the last one. This next segment here I'm not very much fond of. Thankfully they give you a maximum tomato because they, the game developers realize how much you have to hold on to the stone uh, bomb power up but I never like crusher segments whenever I'm in like platformer games ever since Super Mario World. <laughs> like you always get that little jolt of um, your, your, uh, your nervous system just kicking in, just like, oh crap, I gotta avoid that right away. And the best music in this... Oh jeez, oh jeez, what am I thinking? Um, the death jingle in this game is so defeating, too, it's like... Oh jeez, oh no, 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 run, Kirby, run. Okay, this is pretty bad right now. Gotta make sure to jump dash. Alright, I think I'm, I think I'm good. Just continue to jump dash here. What? He... Did you guys see that? He hopped over my slide. That 
I've never seen that happen before. Like, it didn't even look like he hopped that far, but he hop like I slid into the right moment where he hopped over it. Wow, talk about bad timing, but that's the end of the level right over there. Um, <laughs> if you think that crushing sequence is bad, wait until we get into the next level. It's not going to be fun, that's for sure, and it gave me a lot of nightmares when I was younger. But, in any case, here we are in stage 3. Um, again, showing off more of the environments. We're going to need the needle power up here, and it's odd because I've seen some conflicting reports about, like, what kind of uh, power-up you need in order to break the next barricade that you're going to be seeing shortly here. Um, ultimately, all you have to have is just like a needle power up. Like, needle with anything or just plain basic needle can break this next barricade here. There have been like some odd like reports where people say, Oh no, you need like needle and stone or no, you need like needle and like uh, fire or something. No, you just need needle and you're good. You break the barricade and you get that crystal shard. Now... <laughs> This next crystal shard that we'll be, we'll, we'll be seeing after this segment here, or the segment after this one, is unbelievably cryptic. Um, I am going to need an ice enemy though, so I'm going to grab one of those enemies by respawning them by moving away. I think I'm just going to get one by itself currently and see if I can get like a good combination with it. But yeah, this next segment is unbelievably cryptic after the segment over here because it requires some... Uh, um, <laughs> Something very unconventional in terms of getting a crystal shard, and you only do it once in this in, uh, in this entire game. Which does bring me to um, Kirby's Dream Land 3 again. I know, I know that there are people who love the game. I it did not really click with me. Part of the reason why is because of how it tried to convey um, getting a hundred percent. Because I remember finishing Kirby's Dream Land 3 and uh, beating the stages in order, but there wasn't really much in terms of telling me what to do to get the full 100%. I still never 100%ed uh, Kirby's Dream Land 3 to this day, and it's just, I don't know, it was just a huge turnoff because like I kind of like figuring things out um, on my own, so at the same time, I don't know, I guess I didn't really do the same thing with Kirby 64, so I might have the same criticism, but that was just me sort of... Hmm, I can't really find an excuse for that, but... Um, maybe I'll give Kirby Dream Land 3 another chance. Um, maybe refer to a guy for things that didn't seem so cryptic, but... It just feels like a lot of it is cryptic, to be honest. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of my gripe with it. A lot of it is cryptic. Um, I would need to replay the game to sort of like get a better impression of it, because that was pretty much how my impression was uh, last time I played the game. Okay, so... This is the next crystal shard here. Um, Adeline here shows you a painting. And I remember being stumped on this for like three hours, like when I was younger. I was like, what do I do? What do I do with this before I give up? The key is, is that you need to use this picture as a reference for your own canvas in this screen. Yeah, so you have to essentially redecorate this this uh block um of star blocks and try to emulate exactly what Adeline painted. And how can you do that when you're younger? <laughs> How can you, like, come to that conclusion? Um, I... <laughs> the easiest one is the top hat, but the hardest one is the umbrella. Thankfully, we got the one that is in the middle, which is the pizza, but if you screw up, like, one block, you have to, like, go out of the screen and regenerate the blocks and start over. So, right over here, we're emulating the pizza slice with the bottom right and once we have the corners here that would give us the crystal shard again <laughs> who would figure that out when you're when you're like a little kid I, i'm pretty sure i have to refer to a guy for that as well or i think it was like in the nintendo yes i'm always gonna refer to nintendo power magazines i read them a lot while i was younger but um uh what can i say it's just like at kirby 64 does have his cryptic moments but um they're very few and far between compared to the moments you see in Kirby's Dream Land 3. Because I remember there being like some stages where you have to um, destroy all the flowers while at, a, while at a stage before that you have to save all the flowers and it's just like, huh? What's the difference between the two besides color, right? Aren't all flowers the same? But um, in any case, we're gonna keep going through here and I think we skipped our third crystal shard. 
I'm actually gonna go backtrack and see if we did. I don't think we did though. Give me a moment. No. Okay, I'm pretty sure we definitely did it. We're it's in the next segment. Um A lot of a lot of these crystal shards, I am basing it off of my memory. Um the first three stages I did have a bit more practice on, but the latter stages are going to be based on what I remember about this game. Because again, I played through this game so many times because of, um, I think it's down here. Yes. Make sure to, uh, don't fall too far or else you might not have enough oxygen to get back up there. And as you already saw previous, as, uh, demonstrated previously, those, um, platforms can collapse under you if you stay on them too long, akin to how the logs were in the, uh, first stage of this, uh, level. And we have ourselves a cute little uh, formation of rocks here, spelling out Kirby's own name. I think, no, it doesn't say 64, but would have been a little bit amusing. And so far, we're going pretty swimmingly with all these levels. Um, the only miss that I did was the uh, first Crystal Shard of Stage 1, but that's easy to uh, pick up. Um, Alright, so now we're in the actual lava world of um, Kirby 64 here. Um, there was... A bit of a gripe. This reminds me of the gripe that I had when I played through Kirby's Return to Dreamland, where um, they had one of the final levels, like the final hub worlds, be a volcanic level, and I was like, "That's not Kirby. <laughs> Kirby levels don't end with volcanic levels. That's more Mario." And it kind of felt like uh, whoever developed Return to Dreamland was like, "Oh, um, we're making a platformer, but..." Um, what's the quintessential platformer that we have to, uh, base our model off of? Oh yeah, let's just use Mario, because Mario last levels are always volcanic stages. I'm like, no, don't do that. Kirby's already established himself to be, like, um, to have final stages that aren't related to lava. Like, if you think about every last level in, um, Kirby stages, they're almost always, like, intergalactic, pretty much. And... That's what makes that's what gives Kirby his identity. So I remember when I first encountered um, the lava stage being the last one in um, Kirby's uh, Return to Dreamland. I felt a little bit iffy about that, but thankfully they um, rectified and redeemed themselves with the uh, Triple Deluxe and Planet Robobot, where they actually gave um, stages that had a bit more to do with um, whatever was intergalactic, essentially. Okay, so we're gonna go through a King DDD segment here, um, the second of three throughout the game. Um, this one isn't so bad, um, despite the fact that I ran into an obstacle right there, but there is a crystal shard that is a little bit remiss if you aren't aware that you could break two partitions of the barricades, which is what I just demonstrated there. And then we're just gonna do this once more here, just to further demonstrate that fact. King DDD can also uh, wind up his hammer if you hold the B button. You don't really have much of a use for it until you get to segments like this where you run into barricades that require more than one strike to break. Um, you wind up by doing this, but it doesn't really do much besides uh, breaking those uh, stronger barricades that get in your way. And I always hated these Galbo's enemies. Like, I swear, every single like DDD segment must have at least one of these Galbo enemies because they always have like a ranged attack, and King DDD is anything but that. Um, so I always find myself like getting damaged by at least one of them. So if you hold and release, they're instant break. And the platforms here are also unbelievably tight for how big King DDD's model is. So first one we break here, normally you'd walk over, but if we break the second one... Actually, wait, I think I skipped it. Ah, uh, this is going very well. There, there it is. That one's a bit more hidden. But yeah, if you break the second one here, then there is the next Crystal Shard. Or the first Crystal Shard of this level, excuse me. Um, the next one apparently was Cryptic for some. Um, I don't know if I referred to a Nintendo Power or not. I have this sneaking suspicion that I didn't, but... There is a, uh, oh, this is a cute little transition here. Kirby being yanked by King DDD. <laughs> uh, I love their interactions in this game, like... Um, I mean, we all know King DDD, DDD is almost always a good guy in his iterations, um, but the only time that I ever really saw him be, like, a good guy, keep in mind I never played Kirby's Adventure when I played this game, um, I can't really think of any other occasions, like Dreamland 3, he was, and same with uh, Dreamland 2, Dreamland 2, 3, and 64, 
were iterations where uh, King Dedede started to be a good guy, as well with the Kirby's Adventure. I've never played those games before I played 64, um, and to see King Dedede um, be a good guy here was a little bit... was very intriguing for me when I was younger, even though apparently he had like repeat performances beforehand, but again, this was like the first game that I played, first Kirby game that I played where King Dedede was pretty much a good guy. And it was cute. I felt like it was like an evolution of their relationship. It's like, you've always wanted to see like Bowser team up with Mario, and that's why people love Super Mario RPG, and to a further extent, Bowser's inside story. And it's just, you know, it's the little moments that you see like that, that um, keeps gamers coming back. And it's why I really like uh, how Kirby 64 handled King DDD's relationship with Kirby. It's cute, and it shows an evolution of how um, their relationship has grown. So you're probably wondering why I'm keeping this ice power for the longest time. This part here. Okay, I do have memories of me bringing fire and rock here one time, so I might have actually did refer to a guy, but all you need is ice. But make sure to float, because that's still active lava there. <laughs> so that can still trick people on occasion as well. Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> that's also another segment that does trip a lot of people up. Because normally you're conditioned to breaking barricades that have a similar color. This time, you have to rely on the aesthetic that, oh, this is a volcano. You don't need fire. You can't use fire to break fire-based rocks. You actually need the polar opposite of it, ice. So, yeah, I can see that being like a lot of people's final crystal shards, but not as much as the one that I'm going to be demonstrating as once we get to that level. I, I was at first going to say I forgot what Ice and Bomb was, but I just remembered the horrible power-up that we got at uh, level 3 there. Um, but yeah, now we're going to have ourselves a little bit of a escape sequence here. So just like how we had the Indiana Jones sequence back at stage 2, this is, too, this is a bit more dire in a sense. I mean, once you're in a volcano, you have to um, take advantage of the fact that it could erupt, right? I'm pretty sure almost every single game that features a, a dive through the volcano it will almost always erupt. <laughs> and again, once you're flowing through here, you have to be wary of um, your oxygen, as you would in this game. Again, it's just so weird being weary of um, your oxygen in a Kirby game that is in a Smash Brothers game. And the volcano continues to erupt, so we're going to be channeling our inner Metroid here. Um, thankfully, there's no timer, but we have to hang to the left here to grab our final crystal shard for the level until the boss. And I think for the boss, we're, we might have to get a better power up here. <laughs> Thanks for hopping over it and completely ruining my plan there. Um, I don't think there's any other... Oh, there is actually one! Oh, okay, I think we're gonna get it to one of my favorite power ups again. I already showed it previously, but it's still fun to whip out on occasion. Uh, where are you? Oh, wait. Too early, too early. Alright, let's go for this one. Alright, we got ourselves uh, episode 1 up in here. Um, I'm good for health, so we're gonna go for the info card. I totally wasn't going for the one up. Not that it really matters since uh, extra lives reset back to two. Here is our next boss, the boss of Neo Star, Magman. He has two phases. As you're gonna be hearing that more often as we go through these bosses here. So, first phase here, he'll have pillars that'll come out, and they'll do uh, they'll behave differently depending on the phase. Um, and you have to damage them. So it's kind of akin to how Wispy Woods was. Um, so think of it like Wispy Woods version 2.0 with a different coat of paint. You have to be careful though because these uh, pillars can actually damage you back and affect the environment. So you have to be wary about where they're going to be positioned and adjust your positioning accordingly. There was also one other move that it would do where um, two pillars would come out of nowhere and would try to entrap you by curling into the platforms um, below uh, that you're standing on. So you, that was the one move that I would always have trouble with avoiding, but thankfully we didn't have to run into that. Second phase here, he's on your plane now. So you have to damage his face particularly because that's where his hitbox is. Um, it is a little bit irritating, especially when you're going through boss rush, but if you have the broken power up like um, uh, stone and rock, you should be fine. Here with the dual lightsaber, it's not so bad because look at that range to that lightsaber, but uh, thankfully that was the crystal shard and that's it for Neostar. 
I've always liked this cutscene. It was very dynamic. Um, you get to see like everybody in danger, and it's a nice little contrast compared to how the previous um, cutscenes were handled. And we see our next destination right over there. Again, it it's just little things, right? Poor Wildy. Kirby saves them by inhaling him. <laughs> uh, I, again, they're cute, they're innocent, they mean no harm, and in the next episode, we'll be going to Shiver Star. Looks familiar, does it? Well, until then, we'll talk more about it next time. Take care.